Okay, so let's talk about the pieces of my documentary lighting kit. And there are three that I want to talk about today. Obviously, your lighting kit can scale based upon what your production needs. But these are the three pieces that I build around for one or two person interviews and small scene work. Hey, so quick editors note here, I don't talk about natural light, available light, practical light in this video, I'm really talking about lights that you can add to your scene. But that does not mean I mean, documentary filmmaking, your number one tool is the light that is around you and making that work for you. I have something planned for that. Stay tuned. But yeah, this video is specifically on lights that you can use to add to your scene. So the first light I want to talk about is my main light, my key light for most of the interviews that I'm shooting. That's the Aperture 120D. And then I also use the Godox SL60. The reason that I bring these lights along is that they have a great ratio of output to weight and they're LED, so they run cool. I don't need to worry about it blowing out circuits if I'm plugging into people's houses and don't have a lot of flexibility where I get to plug in. There are plenty of videos comparing these two lights and the pros and cons. I don't get too hung up on that. The Godox I bring along because it's lighter. It doesn't have the extra control panel that the Aperture light has with it. And so saving a little bit of weight is super convenient for me. However, the Aperture is always in my kit if I know I'm going to need battery power. There's sometimes where I've been shooting interviews out away from a power source and I need to be running off of batteries, the choice is definitely the Aperture 120D. These are both daylight balanced single source COB lights. So I've got uh, a pack of gels that I bring along with me so that I can match any light source that I want. I also always bring along the Aperture Mini Light Dome 2. This is a super small, flexible soft box that while it doesn't make the biggest source out of the light, it's really convenient, easy to pack, soften things up really nicely. It has a grid attachment and it also has a really convenient magnetic gel holder inside so I don't have to worry about accidentally burning gels or running out of tape and not having the gel taped right so it falls off. You can also use either of these lights to boost the level a little bit in a scene. You can bounce one of these lights off the ceiling. Super easy way to just raise the level a little bit. Maybe that'll buy you some room with your ISO so you're not getting quite as grainy of an image. The second light that is in my lighting kit is the light right over here and that's the Yangnuo YN362 RGB LED light tube. They're RGB, so you can make it whatever color you want. They're also a bi-color light, so you can match daylight or tungsten sources. They have great battery life, they're lightweight, and they're small enough that you can tuck them away in a scene somewhere just to add a little bit of extra light, a little bit of extra interest. And where these Yangno lights really shine is as a backlight, as a hair light. And while I don't recommend it, I actually shot my first feature documentary using two of these lights. I shot them through a 4x4 diffusion frame and those keyed the entire documentary all. I, I think we shot 33 interviews. There are a lot of better ways to do it. There's a reason I carry these, these bigger LEDs now in my kit, but that just shows you how flexible these lights can be. So the third part of my documentary lighting kit that I wanna tell you about is not a light. I mean, it's kind of cheating, but what it is is, oh, it is a five-in-one reflector. And let me tell you, if you get nothing else out of this video, please take away that these things are the most useful part of your kit. They're the cheapest part that you can add to your kit and they are so, so useful. Let me tell you about it. So your basic five-in-one reflector has four sides and then it has a diffusion frame inside of it. The white neutral bounce side of the reflector is I think the most versatile because it's a really easy way to fill in the shadow side. Say you've only got one key light coming in and you want to fill in that fill side a little bit so it doesn't get so contrasty. Very easy to bounce the light back up into the subject's face. Or if you have only overhead lights and just the reflector, you can put the reflector underneath the subject's face, kind of reflect some light back up into the eyes so you're not getting shadows completely obscuring their eyes from being seen by the camera. The, the silver bounce, as you can see, is very reflective. Uh, it'll blind your subject if you put it the wrong way. I don't really use the silver bounce that often. If you're shooting backlit against the sun and you want kind of a, a bounce, but almost full illumination look on the front, it doesn't look great. Again, I don't use the silver side a whole lot. Same with the gold side. The gold side is like the silver side, but it makes people look like they have a fake tan. Again, you could have some creative applications for that, but I don't really get a whole lot of use out of those two bounces as opposed to the white neutral bounce side. The black side of the reflector is not so much for reflecting light as it is taking away light or, or shaping light. So what I use this for most often is negative fill in an interview shot, and it adds just a little bit of extra cinematic contrast to your scene. You can also use it to sort of flag off lights. If you've got a light that's shining into your scene that you don't want, you can put that down. 
or I also see people putting them over the top to block off lights, say there are lights overhead that you don't want on. I've gotten into shooting with negative fill a lot on the interviews that I've been doing recently. I love the simplicity of it. One light as the key, you use this uh, black sided reflector for negative fill and maybe you do a little bit of a hair light and that creates a really clean, really simple look for corporate or documentary videos. And then on the inside of your reflector, we've got a little bit of a diffusion frame. You can see it is, it's diffusing the light, but it's still letting some light through. It's not completely opaque like the white side of the reflector. So you can see my hand shadow. Now with your average five in one reflector, it's going to cut a lot of light as well as diffusing it. It's not a super thin diffusion material. So if you're using a light that doesn't have a lot of output, you're gonna lose a lot of level on your subject by shooting it through this diffusion frame. The best place I would say to use this is in between the sun and and your subject, say you're out on a football field, it's like close to high noon and that light is super harsh. It's putting some awful shadows and your subjects are squinting a lot. But if you throw this in between your subject and the sun, that's gonna really diffuse the light and it's gonna make it a lot easier on their eyes. It's gonna make it a lot easier on their skin. And you're also gonna just have a lower level on them. So it might help you out exposure wise. It's not as big as say, if you would use a four by a six by a 12 by, but in a pinch, this thing is great. And again, it's all about flexibility. This thing packs down nice and small. And I throw at least one of these in my checked luggage, weighs next to nothing and I can pop it up whenever I want and we're good to go. So there you go, there are the building blocks of my documentary lighting kit. It's all about flexibility. If you get nothing else out of this video, just pick lights that give you options, that make you dangerous in a bunch of different situations. That's why I've picked all these lights and this reflector because they give me options. I'll go ahead and leave links to everything that I discussed in this video below. I'll also leave a link to this little travel light stand that I like. Great mix of stability and portability. Let me know if there's another light or piece of equipment that I should check out, something that would make me even more dangerous uh, when I'm shooting a documentary. But yeah, that's been it. See you in the next one. All right, Drew, do your magic.